Hello and welcome to the pre-lab video for experiment seven, investigation of buffers. In this experiment, we want to investigate some of the properties of buffers, specifically their effectiveness. And an effective buffer, the purpose of a buffer is to resist drastic pH changes upon the addition of a strong acid and a strong base. So when we have a buffer, that means we have a solution which contains a relatively high concentrations of a weak acid called HA and that weak acid's conjugate base, A minus. Specifically in today's experiment, our weak acid will be acetic acid and the conjugate base of acetic acid is the acetate ion. And we want to quantify and judge which of these various buffers compose of various ratios of HA and A minus, various ratios of acetic acid and, and acetate ion are better at worse at their job of resisting pH changes upon the addition of the strong acid, strong base. So to do that, we're going to quantify something called buffer capacity. And buffer capacity is just a way of measuring how effective various buffers are. And we can define buffer capacity very simply as the volume of, of a strong acid or a strong base needed to cause the buffer to experience a specific change in pH. Or to put it sort of in equation form, the buffer capacity is equal to the volume of acid or base divided by the absolute change in pH. A more effective buffer will be one that has a higher buffer capacity. It's able to take on more strong acid or more strong base before the pH changes significantly. And notice this has got a two-part experiment. We want to determine both how the buffer capacity is affected by both the relative concentrations of the two components, HA and A minus, as well as their absolute concentrations. So if I want to quantify buffer capacity, I want to be able to keep track of how much strong acid or how much strong base I've added. I'll do that because I'll be delivering the strong acid and then later the strong base using a burette. And I also want to keep track of the pH changes. And so because we expect these pH changes to be relatively small, we'll need to use something more precise, more accurate than our pH indicators. So for that, we'll use a pH meter. So during our experiment, we'll have a pH electrode immersed in our solution, and we'll be able then to read in real time the pH of that solution. So what we expect to happen is I want to add a strong acid, HCl will be our strong acid in today's experiment, to a buffer solution. Then the strong acid will react with and essentially be neutralized by the conjugate base present, the acetate ions in our experiment, to produce water and then more of the weak acid, the more of the, of the acidic acid. The pH will change. pH will, in fact, decrease, as we'll see, but the pH will only decrease relatively insignificantly because the pH of a buffer by henderson hospital equation is equal to the pKa, just some number for the component, plus the log of the ratio of the concentration of its components. So when I add a strong acid, this ratio will change because upon the addition of a strong acid, this number will decrease slightly, this number will increase slightly, so this ratio will decrease. But notice that the effect of the change in the, in the relative concentrations is a logarithmic relationship. So even a significant change here, because it's a logarithmic of the ratio, that's going to have a less than significant impact on the pH. But the pH will decrease, but only slightly. Conversely, if I add a strong base to my buffer, the strong base stood in hydroxide in our experiments, is going to react with and be neutralized by the weak acid component, the acidic acid component in my buffer, to produce water, and then more of the acetate ion, more of the weak base. In effect, yes, the pH will increase. Once again, it only increased relatively insignificantly because by addition of strong base, I'll have less of the weak acid. This number will go down a little bit. This number, though, will go up. This ratio will go up, but it's a log of a small increase in the number gives us an overall small increase in the pH. So we have five parts of our experiment. The first part is I'll prepare various buffers, various acidic acid sodium acetate buffers, a 10 to 1 ratio, a 1 to 1 ratio, and a 1 to 10 ratio. So these are like 10 parts to 1 part, 1 part to 1 part, and 1 part to 10 parts of the two components, acidic acid and acetate ions, using the provided acidic acid sodium acetate solutions. We'll then calibrate pH meter with solutions of known pH. So the pH meter will be able to give us reliable, accurate readings 
of the pH of our buffer solutions during our experiments. Then we'll determine the buffer capacity for each of those buffers against the addition of a strong acid. So effectively, I will add HCl solution via the burette and can you do so until the pH changes by at least one unit. We'll do this similar type of experiment this time though with sodium hydroxide as a strong base, deliver sodium hydroxide via the burette into a solution until the pH increases by at least one unit. And then finally in part five, we'll determine the effect of buffer dilution on buffer capacity against the addition of strong gases. So we'll dilute one of these buffers by a factor of 10 and then also by a factor of 100 repeat very similar type of experiment and then see how much strong acid it takes for that pH change by at least one pH unit. So our first table will come from part three. So this is the buffer capacity experiments of the various buffers against strong acid, HCl. And so we'll have four different experiments. The first three experiments are using the various buffers of various relative ratios of their components. And from the video, we wanna be able to record the initial pH of our buffer and then also the final pH after the addition of the strong acid. So we'll be able to record these numbers. We then wanna calculate the absolute change in pH. I'll provide for you on an Excel spreadsheet, these numbers, the initial volume HCl and the final volume HCl. Those are the, simply the, the readings from the burette. Those are, those are usually trickier to do via video. And finally calculate the buffer capacity of each of these four being equal to the volume of HCl added divided by the absolute change in pH. So this column divided by this column. And we'll do that for the three buffer solutions, as well as to really emphasize the importance of buffer solutions. We'll run the same experiment, but this time just simply using deionized water, a non-buffered system. Table two then is for part four, where we repeat very similar experiments we did for HCl, but this time we'll be delivering sodium hydroxide to our buffers, keeping track of the initial pH, final pHs, calculate the absolute change in pH. I'll provide for you the initial and final volume readings of the sodium hydroxide in your burette, calculate the change in the volume based upon those numbers, and then calculate the buffer capacity has been equal to the ratio of the volume of sodium hydroxide added, this column, divided by the absolute change in pH experience, the data in this column. And then in observation summary table three, part five, these are our dilution experiments, where we will dilute the one-to-one -one buffer by a factor of 10, dilute it also by a factor of 100, and run similar type of experiments, where once again, you'll be able to read the initial pH, the final pH values, calculate the absolute change pH. I'll give you these initial volumes and final volumes, calculate the change in volume of HCl, and then finally calculate the buffer capacity of each of these three buffer solutions. Notice that this row, it's gonna keep out the asterisk, we've already done this experiment, and so you just need to copy the data from table one so that we have, in this table, just see clearly the effect of dilution on the buffer capacity of our one-to-one -one acidic acid sodium acetate solution. In our lab report, as always, record the pre-lab assignment, Make sure you include full and detailed procedures. Make sure you include every single possible detail you can from the video. All your observations, both qualitative and quantitative. Your results, minimally including all those observation summary tables and our discussion questions. And then submit your original white pages. Make sure you include the rubric attached and then the objective annotated yellow pages a little bit later until the respective due dates. And finally, discussion questions. First has to do with simply answering a question of the day, which is which buffer had the highest buffer capacity against addition of strong acid? Which buffer had the highest buffer capacity against addition of strong base? And then which buffer overall was best against both strong acid and strong base? Explaining the answers to those questions. Secondly is for part five, the dilution experiments, was there any effect on the buffer capacity of the diluted buffers? Did diluting the buffer have any impact on the actual buffer capacities from the experimental data? And if so, then estimate the buffer capacity of a one to 1,000 diluted one to one acidic acid sodium acetate buffer against a strong acid. So this is not something that we actually do in the, in the experimental procedure. We do the one to 10 and the one to 100, but do we see a trend there in how the dilution affects the buffer capacity? And then can we, from that, 
estimate what the buff capacity would be of a even further diluted one to a thousand diluted buffer solution. And then as always, describe at least two experimental errors and or experimental assumptions, including the impact these error assumptions may have had actually on the results.